Alrighty, Mr. Gatekeeper here. Boy, it's been a long day. Now, this is going to be a little bit different of a video than everybody is used to. Alright. Basically, there is a... I'm sure most people most have learned that keeps up with my channel throughout the years that I am one of those type of guys that kind of have love for both sides of the spectrum when it comes to radio. If you're a guy that likes both sides of the spectrum when it comes to radio, then you probably know what I mean when I say both sides of the spectrum both sides alright well basically about four years ago I was contacted by a buddy of mine that they basically heard that I had a special skill in the digital world of things that they needed somebody to participate in a really cool, unique, special event that happens every year starting on July 1st to July 7th. And um, I said, sure, let's do it. So basically, it, 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 it required me to use a computer, you know, to c connect to my radio and and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and it was great. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. I think I made over 4,000 contacts that seven days. And uh, with me being able to use some software that I had already been designing for about two or three years, on and off, just constant updating and everything, it, it made it a lot easier where I could do the event and plus still do my daily work on the bench here. But anyway, the next year, I thought, you know, it would be really cool if I could run two radios. I was sitting there thinking, now that would be neat. If I could run two radios at once, I could make even more contacts, you know. Well, the problem with that was is I only had one radio from this side of the spectrum. Let me take you over here to it right now. With it, which is my beloved Yezu 991A. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's over here doing its thing. Participating in the event. But I thought it would be so, 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 so cool if I could get not only that radio but another radio up and running. Ugh. So, last year, here's my box dedicated to, to, to this last year. So I had me a nice uh, little antenna tuner. Had me a nice signal link uh, inter interface sound card. And I also had a dummy sound card that wasn't working. I could look at in parts and this and that, and this and that. And basically, I had another uh, rig that I hooked up, and it was a catastrophe. The rig was probably made back before I was even thought of being born. And with that radio literally running for five days I made like 40 contacts so something just wasn't right with the radio and I always thought in my mind wouldn't it be really cool to take one of my beloved 10 meter radios well technically now it's a tri-band radio 
wouldn't it be really cool if I could somehow marry this up and use this and connect this to my computer so I started playing with some circuits and some designs this was one I was playing with. These are uh, 600 ohm one-to-one -one isolation transformers. And you can see, I, th this is not the only circuit I tried. Oh my God, I tried four or five different things. Basically what I was trying to do was I was trying to get the audio from the computer to t bias this 2222 transistor ohm, like a key-in circuit, right? A key in circuit, but instead of with RF, with audio. Man, I couldn't figure it out to save my life. I got so tired of it, I said, I'm done. And I packed everything up. So, sometime earlier this year, I, I reapproached the situation and tried it again and was not successful. So, the other day, I got to really looking around, studying, seeing what it really takes to bias a 222A transistor. And it don't take much, you know. And I'm like, why can't I figure out how to get the audio coming from here to bias this transistor? Why am I wanting to bias this transistor? Because as soon as that audio starts playing from this program right here, this digital program I need my radio to key up that's the first thing I need to have I can't get that to happen nothing else is even is, is going to even work that's the first thing I had to figure out so that's the only thing I was attacking and you know and I got some other sound cards here uh, these are just sound cards don't have to have it I could just plug straight into my computer but I like to use an external sound card so that I can use my regular uh, speakers at the same time and listen to my, my, my radio through my computer. So, basically, this is what I started with. Now, let me explain. There's a relay and an LED, as you can see, because that's what I was testing with first. I was trying to see if I can get the relay to actuate with the audio. And I was sitting there thinking, maybe that's too much of a load for the transistor with the amount of audio I'm feeding to it. And I'm trying to get, you know, to, to, maybe it's too much of a, a, of a load. So then I'm like, I bypassed the relay right here. And I just did the LED itself hooked up with the ground to the collector of the transistor. So... If that transistor goes into forward bias, then the LED will light. So I started playing around with that, and I couldn't figure it out to save my life. Couldn't figure it out to save my life. And I was sitting there thinking. This is where I was at. Sorry, the bug out here. First off, this cap wasn't here. Okay, that's a sweet thing, Colin. Hopefully, she'll uh, oh, shoot. All right, I was able to send her text through my doing a video. I don't want to stop it, I'll be finished really quick. She's basically telling me, Hey, gatekeeper. Get your A in here and get the shower so we can get in the goddamn bed. That's what she's... <laughs> she keeps my A straight, man. So basically, I was trying all kinds of different ways with the diode. Because I knew that it, we, the diode had to be used to do this. Because we have to... Even though it's audio, it's still considered AC. And I knew I still needed to... Rectify that audio to a pulsating DC. So I was trying all kinds of threat, and I gave up today. I seriously gave up. And I was eating lunch, and I was sitting there thinking about the orientation that I had these in. 
the way I was trying this was this diode was this way. Because that's, believe it or not, I, if I'm remembering right, that's how we do a lot of our big transistors. Uh, do our big transistors. I was sitting there thinking, I know it can't make a difference, man. I don't understand why it would make a difference. But let me move it in front of this diode. As soon as I did that, now keep in mind, this wasn't right here, okay? As soon as I did that, I, honestly, I think what was, I was playing YouTube, and I think there was some, uh, some old school 90s hip hop playing. Uh, I think it was, it was, uh, the Snoop Doggy Dog Gin and Juice. If, if my memory serves me right, that's what was just playing. I was just trying to play something. I couldn't hear it to, to, to test this. So, sorry, I'm gonna try not to move around. I got all this crap right here in front of me. As soon as I did that, I began to see this LED start to flicker. It started flickering. I now at the time this wasn't here, and this wasn't here. Okay, I was just testing going through here to here because I knew if I was getting close, I would at least see the LED right here starting to flicker or do something. I would see something, you know, and it started flickering. So the first thing I did. Let's play it around with some different values right here. And I noticed it got a little better, but it still wasn't where it needed to be. So I got lost for probably two or three hours. And then I started sitting there thinking about a coupling capacitor. You know, uh, uh, to couple this, a coupling capacitor. So I got on Google, started looking in, you know, what would be the best type of capacitor to couple audio audio not RF but audio and I found out it was an electrolytic so I threw this 10 microfarad electrolytic on here and boy the second I started playing that YouTube video that LED lit straight got picking up and you ought to heard me in here I was in here screaming and yelling heck yeah baby heck yeah <laughs> I get excited over this stuff because I've been trying to get this done for like two years so, God, that made me so happy. So, next, the very next thing I want to do is, let's see if this will actually key the radio. So, that's when I got the mic jack. I uh, got me a mic jack and wired it all up. And, by God, let's just show you. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to... I'm going to hit this little tune right here. Now, what this tune does, let me let you hear it for y'all self. Let me turn my volume up so we can all hear this. All right, here's what this tune does. Well, we can't hear it. Oh, uh, I got to turn the talk back on to be able to hear that. I think. Let me see. Yeah, there we go. So I got to turn the talk back on so the talk back will play back for the speaker and go through here. It's crazy a little loop. But. Alright, you hear that? Alright. As soon as I play that tone, look what happens. It goes in a transmit that quick. Let's turn that top back, back off. So once I seen that that bad boy keyed that radio up, oh my God, I was happy. I was happy. Now let me turn this volume back down because I'm actually listening to the radio through the computer there. So then I knew the next two things. All right. So let me show you here. We had already, I had already successfully got this. This is the Vox PTT circuit to work with audio coming out of my computer to take 
pin one and take pin three and connect them together. You see pin three goes to the collector, pin one goes to the emitter. Once it's biased, current flows, they connect together, boom. The radio keys with audio. That is a beautiful Vox circuit. See, now I can, now this is another reason I'm making this video. Now think about the possibilities with this circuit now. Noise toys, so you could create a noise toy module. And as soon as the noise toy begins to play, the radio keys. Like you don't even have to key yourself. You could put it on a switch, you know. Vox, turn on. Radio keys. There's all kinds of possibilities with this. Or you hook up them. I'm sorry I'm moving around a lot. My, my, I'm in an uncomfortable spot here. Y'all hang in there with me. Alright. So next I knew what I needed to do is I needed to get my my radios receive into my computer. This is the sound card. I needed to get my computer's audio output into my radio. All right. Let's go but one by one. I know this is probably going to be boring for a lot of you because this ain't normal radio stuff. So this is a plug right here coming to the external speaker. And it comes down to this right here. Now what this is is a simple voltage divider. A attenuator, if you will, for audio. And the reason why I built this was I noticed that it was slamming my computer. Slamming it. I could barely even take the RX knob right here and turn it down. It was slamming it. So I, I built a small divider. Uh, I think it turns it down about eight, nine times, something like that, close to that. I could have done a 1,000 uh, to 10K to do a 10, a one, 10 to 1, but I, I just rolled with this. I, 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 and it works great, man. It's uh, 1K to 680. And this is what you see right here in the circuit. Okay, so that's just taking my receive coming out of my radio and attenuating it a little bit and then putting it into the mic jack. So that's what this top diagram right here connects back to here. All right, and that's my receive. That's what we're hearing and seeing right here on the waterfall. Okay. Next is the audio coming from my computer which is that tone we were just listening to, right? That tone. And we have to direct inject this through the, the audio pin, which is pin number two, right here, the audio pin. Now, with this, this meter, since it's been modified, as soon as you key, it just slams. <laughs> so I can't really use this meter to, because we don't have an ALC here, y'all. I don't know if a lot of y'all know what an ALC is. The automated limiting, limiter circuit. We don't have an ALC here that we can use, so we, we have to do all this manual. I want to make sure that now the audio that's coming from the computer ain't slamming into the radio so hard that it's going to overdrive the radio's audio. So we need to put an attenuator on it, but I have no idea what attenuation is going to work for that because that's completely different than my radios because my radio output is way less voltage than my computer. My computer is way more voltage. So that's when I had the idea of looking up an audio attenuator and adding a variable. I'm using this big, big variable because I didn't have any 500 ohm variables. So that's what we're looking at right here. All right, the audio comes in. Okay, this is the audio. It comes in. All right, it goes right here and splits away for the Vox circuit, okay? Now it splits away up here to another voltage divider. It goes to a 4.7K. All right. Flows through this variable. Now, this is the resistor we need to go to ground, which is this ground right here. That's what that just means, this ground right here. 
So this is the way we will wire this up to do that. We'll put the wiper, which is the middle, to the audio pin. And the audio coming right here. And then right here, we'll go to ground. Does this remind you of something, y'all? Reminds you of a little variable circuit we put on our amplifiers. Now, if I needed to adjust this some more, if this right here was a little bit too big for some reason, I could put a resistor going on the ground. But So, it worked like a cut dang charm. I could not believe that I got it right on the first try. I thought maybe I'd have to add a 1K or, 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 or who knows. So, I couldn't go by this. So, what I do is I play that tone that we were just listening to. And I unplug the external jack so I can hear it coming in here with the talk back. Alright, and then I literally turn this to figure out which is volume up and volume down. And basically, I just turned it to where volume's down as low as possible. And that's the way I'm going to start. Tomorrow, when I really put this to the true test and get this transmitting all day long, I will see if I maybe need to increase that or not. But I have already got to test it because I have already made two contacts already. And one was to a fella 7,800 miles away. And one was to a fella... 1800 miles away it works it works and i'm glad i'm surprised my voice don't sound crazy from here screaming going crazy so much it works now this is a big mess i've got to get back to work right here tomorrow so i don't quite know what i'm gonna do this is all completely prototyping as it's absolute ugliest and worse i would kind of wish maybe i would have took time and, and, and went this route but as you can see when I was doing this I kind of had confidence I was going to be able to figure it out so that's why I was in a way trying to make it somewhat neat I had a little bit of confidence when I was working on this today I didn't have any confidence I was just giving another shot in the dark but it worked I don't have time to recreate this and put it on a bare board so I don't know Tomorrow I'll figure it out. I got to get all of this out of the way. Get this Superstar 158 mounted back up there. And I've got to figure out what I'm going to do about all this. I'll tell you the truth. What I think I may do is just take this laptop, clean some stuff up the top, and put it up there and get it out of the way. But another little problem I may have... We're going to show this one more time just in case anybody may be interested in something like this. Is this heat sink back here. Now this radio is not designed to be sitting here and be keying up every 15 seconds. You know, driving like crazy. So I am probably going to have to set up some wild fans. Maybe one fan blowing this direction. I don't know, man. I might have to play around with it. See, I may not be able to key this radio on. If I, if I had the ability to turn the power on this radio down to, let's say, 10 watts PEP, 10, 12 watts PEP, maybe even lower down to 4 watts PEP, if I had that ability which most of the time we don't want that ability when we're doing, you know, but then this particular reason, situation, if I could do that, then I could take like a four-pill amplifier or something and run that into a four-pill amplifier, maybe do two, three hundred watts, and take the heat off this and put it onto the amplifier, just which you got to, you know, put a good fan on. But anyway, that's enough. I got to go in and get ready. I'm stoked about this, happy about it. I just thought I'd make a video. Some of y'all tech heads out there may be interested in it. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. This is the old gatekeeper. I got to get back on this Texas Star right here tomorrow. It's a favor for a buddy of mine. All right, the old gatekeeper out here around the backwoods, a big GA baby. If y'all made it this far, thank you. 
And by the way, before I go, y'all may have seen this sitting here. This is something I built last year, and I have forgot I built it. This is basically what this is, but instead of using a transistor, it's using an optocoupler. And I have no idea if it works or not. I'm sure it does. I'll be honest, it's quite simple. Quite, 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 quite simple. I'll test it out and check it out. But even though I want to use my own. Y'all know how it is. All right, I'm good and going, y'all. Old gatekeeper 73. Bye-bye.